Okay, guys, so I've done it again. Another fantastically interesting lock, and I've been really looking forward to uh, doing a video on this one. This lock was very, very kindly sent to me by uh, Lock New. So, Lock New, my friend, thank you so much for sending this really interesting lock over to me and everything else you've sent over to me. We'll be doing a video on some other locks very shortly. This is the Castell Interlock, uh, which is like a, a safety locking system for industry, for like um, production lines or CNC machines and bits and pieces. Um, now, the way it works you have a key which obviously the bitting code there um, as you can see is uh, B3A with this little dash here as well um, so the unique key would actually probably have the negative side of this on top of it with this little uh, semicircle uh, um, in there um, this little semicircle notch in it um, and then um, of course what happened is it, 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 it will come in two parts basically um, you'd have the power supply unit for the particular um, production plant you're working on um, and then this will be actually on the uh, the gate or the door to the actual um, production line um, and then obviously the power supply unit be next to it so you'd put the key into the power supply unit and turn it on, um, which would then energize the actual um, the actual power supply unit, so you'd be able to turn it on. Um, so without the uh, interlock key actually in place and on, you can't energize the, um, the, the, the work unit up. Um, and then if you wanted to either retrieve your um, the, the, the piece of work you're working on from the CNC machine or if you needed to service the actual machine or service the plant, um, then obviously you would uh, turn the, um, the unit off, take the key out, and then the key would be inserted into here, turn this clockwise, which would then give you the opportunity to open this up, which should then give you access into the um, production line um, or the CNC machine. So it's an absolute complete fail safe. Without that key in there, um, you can't open this and without the power supply unit being turned off and the key um, the, without the, uh, the key actually in the power supply unit you can't turn it on so you can only work on one part at a time um, and obviously from complete safety and as I said each part of the production line will have its unique key with its power supply unit and with this uh, entrance uh, this uh, this um, locking system to get you actually into the actual um, the area where, where uh, the machines are working so you cannot you cannot accidentally just turn the machine on because the keys in there and once this key is actually in there you can't take that key out until such time as this this lock is actually back inserted and the door is locked and then it will actually let you um, uh, um, turn the key clockwise again. Um, we're going to go into how this works um, in the next part of this video. Um, but it's exact, exactly the same for the power supply unit. You put that key in, you turn it, and then it'll allow you to actually energize the machine. You need to turn the machine off before the key will go back. Um, and then obviously you can uh, insert the, uh, uh, take the key out, and then obviously insert it back into it. Absolutely interesting and such a simple design. What we'll do in the next part of this video, I'll explain how the actual locking system works and how it interlocks, and so you can't actually take it out. And then, of course, we'll uh, see if we can pick into it. Okay, guys, so the uh, Castell interlock, um, as you can see by um, the actual front, I'm going to just turn it around here a little bit and just so I can sort of go through the details of it. I'm going to get you zoomed in a bit there as well. Okay, so of course the actual key bit in would actually be the B3A and this little dash here, which I have a negative side on the inside of the key. And then you've got this uh, semicircle here um, that actually the key will actually have, and then it'll have a, like a little groove. If you actually look underneath there, you can actually see this little groove here. So the little semicircle there, which is a little cutout, would have, the key would be able to insert into there, and then it'll have like a little gap underneath, so it'll actually freely rotate. Um, to the position it needs to but because on this side or this side or this side it has no um, semicircle you can't get that key out um, unless it was back in the 12 o'clock position which of course it would be the off position or the lock position actually on this particular lock here um, and then it's actually only got four four little um, uh, pins there um, now if it was just like a normal standard four pin lock it would be relatively easy to overcome but they've thought about that, you see, this um, uh, Castell. Um, and uh, these are actually tapered pins. There's probably about a one mil difference from the top to bottom. So as this whole unit will need to um, rotate, and you've got these tapered pins, they actually only bite for half a second or half a half a millimeter each time. So you're going round and round and round and round and round and round in circles to actually get this open. You need to basically pick it probably about 40 times and it will just literally move tiny little increments at a time until it actually reaches the position that will actually let you actually open this up or obviously energize the actual uh, mechanical side. So a very, very clever, very, very clever 
um, uh, system here using very very simple idea obviously the tapered pins they, they work absolutely fantastically and just this little lip that goes around there with this little semicircle out to stop you from retracting the key wonderful wonderful system and um, yeah I thoroughly enjoy sort of looking into this the actual website of um, Castell is actually really interesting as well because they, they they make um, these sort of locks for electrical shutoffs and uh, various other things I, I think they make about 40 different variants um, so so yeah very 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 interesting I'll leave a link for um, YouTube uh, for um, uh, lock news um, YouTube video as well there because it's very interesting he had a bank of five and um, so of course then they all sort of uh, yeah were in line so of course it will give you different um, access to, um, to different parts of uh, the, the power supply unit. I think that's how that one worked but this one here as I said it would come with this key to actually get you into the production line and of course the actual power supply to actually run the power the um, production line so very very interesting fantastic lock I really really enjoyed it um, looking into this lock. This is what we do, we'll um, get it lined up and we'll uh, see if we can pick into it. Okay guys, let's see if we can get into this. Now obviously one of the biggest problems you've got obviously with um, with the actual uh, sort of size of the actual um, uh, unit there you've actually got to rotate is obviously how to get into it. So I quite went through, um, if you look at Lock Noob's video, he used a pair of long nose bent pliers which, is, uh, which works fantastically but unfortunately I haven't got any. Um, so I thought right, what else can I use? So <laughs> I thought we'd use this automotive, uh, I think it opens a little uh, dusk um, shutter on a uh, car lock and it actually fits quite nicely in there. Okay, and you can apply quite a lot of pressure because this thing needs quite a lot of uh, pressure to actually open it. Um, and then of course I'm just going to use like a little um, broken pick. So of course what we need to do is go around, it takes a little time so I'm just going to go for it as quick as I possibly can. And, uh, and then hopefully we can get the open and then I'll show you the uh, other really interesting part of this. Like I said, I will go through it as quick as I can because these tapered pins, they literally just bite for a second and then you've got to um, go to the next one. So you're just going around and around circles. Definitely not ideal in a uh, real life situation, but you don't really want a safety mechanism to be uh, compromised anyway because uh, it's uh, not good, but like I say, just just from sheer interest, I just wanted to know how I could actually uh, manipulate this to get it open. So we're just going to go through it. Won't take too long. You're using very very heavy tension, and just going through pin by pin. Like the, the springs are exactly the same, and the actual length of the actual pins are identical as well. So it is just literally a case of just going through and it, it would just rotate a tiny bit each time and then once we actually start getting into it a little bit further you'll uh, you'll see a little bit of movement on the uh, core and we know we're nearly there let's say we're getting very close now just literally just pin by pin heavy tension Okay, I think we're very nearly there now. So this lock really interested me. It did. It was really interesting learning about the lock and and what it does. Okay, I think we're nearly there. I'll actually see what I'm doing here, but okay, we've got a little bit of movement there, a little bit more movement. Okay, and finally, there you go, we're open. Okay, so it didn't take too long. Um, now what we need to do, we need to rotate it to the point where it actually let us open the lock, which I believe is about there. A little bit further. And it's just It just gets caught on this one here next. So we're just gonna put this back in. And just gonna manipulate that a bit. That's good. A little bit more. And there you go. I think we're open now. Nope. A little bit more. Don't want to go too far. Otherwise, I've got to pick it back again. There you go. And that opens up, which will then open the lock, as you can see by the diagram in the corner there. Um, but the actual key as well has actually got like a like a proper little key there as well, which actually interlocks obviously with the uh, key mark there as well. So a really really simple 
but effective system here with those tapered pins and the bit in obviously being the actual um, bit code, the actual code of the actual lock there as well. Um, but I do find this an absolutely fascinating thing. And obviously this would be on a uh, be sort of, as, as you would open up, it would spring load out um, and actually uh, you'd actually be able to get access into the machine. Obviously knowing that the, you've actually got the only key, um, so you can't actually re-energize the, uh, the actual unit up until such time as this is uh, being shot back in again. So of course we put it back in again, like that. And then of course we just have to uh, lock it back up again. Just gonna put that into that little A. Go back through, just depress that again. And of course we're then locked again. So an absolutely fantastic locking system, um, which actually you know, very for safety reasons rather than just to obviously for security reasons. But Lock and my friend, thank you very much for sending this over to me. I really do appreciate it. I thoroughly enjoyed looking into this lock. It was a very interesting lock to look into. Listen, guys, hope you found that interesting. Fantastic lock. Of course, I'll be catching up with you again very shortly. Thanks, guys.